The weather is absolutely atrocious outside. Predictions that today and tomorrow we're going to get wind gusts of up to 128 kilometers an hour, which is an insane amount of wind, but impossible and also downright dangerous to actually physically cycle the bikes. So we've actually found some shelter and some accommodation and we're going to ride out the storm. And we thought what a better time to actually run through you the bikes, um, kind of show you the type of stuff that we've taken and kind of just give you a rough rundown of, of how our adventure panned out. I think, however, it could be really nice for me to mention that um, these guys at uh, Vatna Jokal Tours, cue my loyal assistant Rob, have basically allowed us to use their space and given us free accommodation whilst we wear out the storm. And if you are in the area and you fancy taking some time to go up on the glacier, they do run some awesome tours on snowmobiles and these insane monster trucks. So do check them out and they've been really supportive of our adventure. Anyway, moving on to our bike and the stuff that we've chosen to take. I guess the most obvious piece of kit that we could start with is in fact the bike itself. It's a Cube New Road EX. It's a gravel bike and it's blue, if you can see it amongst all the other stuff. Actually, it's a dirty blue at the moment, but anyway. Um, and actually for me, it's the first time that I've ever ridden um, a dropped handlebar setup. I've always had, you know, more traditional things. Um, so it took a bit of getting used to. I've got a few problems with my back and uh, it took me a while to get used to the more lean forward position, but overall it's been pretty, pretty fine um, as far as that's concerned. Um, I did swap out the saddle uh, for a, an old Brook saddle that I've had for like five years and you know, it's perfect on my bottom. Um, if it ain't broke, why fix it? And it's actually allowed me to do our circumnavigation of Iceland um, without the need of wearing even cycle padded shorts or any bum cream or any ointments or potions. So literally I've just been wearing my shorts and that's been fine. Now we've chosen a, a bike packing setup versus a more traditional pannier setup that perhaps you're familiar with. Bike packing is more of a kind of bespoke way of ramming as much kit over your bike as much as possible. There are pros and cons to both methods. Again, it's personal choice. Um, we did meet a really experienced bike tourer and he said with panniers on your bike, it's very difficult to push the bike uphill because they do get in the way of your legs. And we have certainly been doing a lot of pushing up hills rather than cycling. So let me start at the back. We're using uh, a bag system from a company from the UK uh, called Apidura, and they specialize in bike packing setups. Um, so bear with me as I'm gonna randomly pull bits and bobs out of, um, out of the bags. Um, this, this one can hold a lot actually, and inside it I've got obviously a sleeping mat, this is an X-Ped, never used X-Ped before, it's worked fine, so, so that's been pretty cool. Um, in, the, in here, if I can pull it out, come on, is the sleeping bag. Pretty important uh, sleeping bag um, when you're in a tent at night, otherwise you will get a wee bit chilly. Um, it's a Rab 800. Um, sleeping bag. It's done as proud. Um, so obviously sleeping bags are highly recommended. Um, chuck that on the floor. Something new for the trip I bought was a Sea to Summit inflatable pillow. This little thing um, inflates really, really quite well and gives me a really good night's sleep. It's been absolutely awesome. Nothing else in there. This bag has been bomb proof, but with all of these bags, if you don't wrap them up properly enough, you are going to have a problem and water will get in. So moving along the bike, um, 
random piece of kit. You don't really need this in Iceland, an exceptionally safe country, very little theft. But if we were going into one of the many cafes that we found en route, <clears throat> um, you could lash this and it would keep your bike safe, but we've hardly used it anyway. It doesn't weigh anything. I'm carrying my tent poles here. Rob, if you would like to show the audience the tent pole position. The, the tent poles I've lashed onto the frame because obviously the tent poles are a fixed length and it makes, you know, common sense uh, to lash them here. So that is that. Um, here is what's known as a frame bag and it's probably the best place to carry the heavier items or the bulkier items. So in here, if I can get it out live on YouTube without spending 30 seconds doing it, et voila, is our stove from MSR, MSR Rectar. Um, I've had this now about five years and I did some tests at home and it actually boils water quicker than a domestic kettle, which is an insane um, um, system. Very, very, very effective in wind. I won't go into too much detail what I do have in here, um, besides a spare uh, burner, little fire stick. We're not using matches or cigarette lighters because they can get wet, but you will always get a spark from this thing. Probably one of the most important items you could ever have on any adventure is a coffee filter. I've had this like 10 years. It's fantastic. It filters coffee. What more can you say? And this is the little burner. And something else for a safety consideration, do invest in this little gizmo that actually, you know, I'll show Rob, it actually allows you to stand your gas canister because the last thing you want is your burner boiling over. Anyway, I can do that with one hand, but pretty much that's it. So really good. I won't throw that. I'll put it over here out of shot. What else we got in the frame bag? Well, um, power bank. And I put that in a separate dry bag for obvious reasons, because it's electrical. When you are putting stuff in your, in your bags, your Rapidura bags, if it is electrical, it would be wise to double bag because obviously electrical is electrical. I'll chuck that perfectly aimed on my sleeping bag. What do we got? The toilet roll. Essential item for obvious reasons. And you know, over the last years, we've hated using a disinfectant hand gel, but when you go for a wild poo, it's good to have some hand gel with you. And of course, when going for wild poos, um, you wanna leave no trace. This is a Sea to Summit shovel and it digs a little hole. I'm sure everyone at home has seen a little shovel, but it's essential for digging a hole for your poo. Enough talking about that. That's pretty much all in there. Moving on to this little baggie, um, some bits and bobs, daily things, things that you might want to get on the fly without having to unpack. Um, most of it actually we didn't use, but with a lot of these things, uh, especially when they're small, it's better to have than rather want. Um, insect repellent, Iceland generically doesn't have mosquitoes, but there could be other bugs or ticks or other items, so insect repellent. Sun cream, um, P, P20, is that right, Rob? Yep. P20 sun cream, incredible stuff. Um, basically, you put it on once and it protects your face the entire day. I think it was kind of invented for surfers or divers or, or those kind of people that may be in and out of water the whole time. Fantastic stuff, we used it once. But, you know, the last thing you want is sunburn if the weather did turn nice. Okay. Lip balm. And, oh, the little battery for my light. I will come to that in a minute. So that's the kind of things that are in there, all really useful stuff. And actually, as I've just talked about the battery pack for my light, let's move on to my front light. Uh, Rob, if you could come in and uh, show everyone. I'll take the water bottle out. It's by a company called Lazine. This is 1,100 lumen. Now, one lumen is one candle. So um, this is extremely bright and it does have a backup battery which fits nicely 
into my little bag here. So there's the battery, two batteries in effect, and you can also use this, Rob, can you show everyone? This can also be used as basically a power bank as well. So you could even charge your phone whilst you're cycling and flashing your intensely bright light, which basically makes you look like a lighthouse. But nonetheless, at the end of the day, you wanna be safe on the road. On top of the light, I fitted a Lazine little computer. Now, I must confess, I've got no idea how this thing works. It's not that it's complicated, it's just that I'm generically lazy and I couldn't be bothered to read the manual. However, Rob is a real techie geek and he knows every single function about this thing and he can tell me at any time how many millimeters we've traveled. So it is a useful piece of kit and all of these items are of course charged by USB. So you do need to find a place to plug in and get some power. Over here, um, some Lazine, uh, so not Lazine, um, Apidura kind of grab snack bags, whatever you want to put in there, water. We're carrying about four liters of water and that's fine for generic drinking, but when it comes to eating in the evenings and you want coffees and teas and blah, 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 that's not enough water. So we've had to kind of source water en route some of the places it's been easy, there's been plenty of streams and stuff, and in other places we've had a real issue. But at the end of the day, water is physical weight and there's only so much you can physically carry on a bike. Like I said, we've had about four, four and a half waters, sorry, four and a half liters on the bike. I bought some, um, some generic pouches by SIG. Uh, these are great for kind of everyday munches. Um, these are some energy bars by Real Tourmat, a lovely Norwegian company. I've got some dilute juice in there and tea bags and whatever you fancy, you know, they're in there. Keep them nice and easy and accessible. Moving on to the front, this is actually where my tent lives and I'll come to my tent in a moment. But on the front, um, I've got a kind of run and gun bag and um, Rob's gonna show you what's in here. So, gloves. I've got multiple layers of gloves. Gloves are really important because gloves are gonna wet out constantly. So you're gonna be constantly, you know, using different glove systems. These are some really comfortable gloves by Cube, uh, the same guys as the bike. They were really lovely. What else have I got in here? I've got a wee little hat from um, Armadillo. This is Merino wool. I'm gonna talk about Merino uh, shortly, but Merino wool is awesome. Another little hat by Rab. Again, this is, I've used at camp actually. Um, I find that the, the thin Merino works better under the helmet, and this is good around camp. What else? Um, head neck, um, not head neck, kind of like a buffy type thing. Head scarf. Merino wool from Armadillo, fantastic. Another Armadillo Merino hat, extremely lightweight, unbelievably useful, literally, here it is in my fist. Amazing piece of kit, a spoon, very essential. See to summit. One of my favorite items that I've had for nearly 25 years, they don't make it exactly like this, but a knife by Petzl. It's just one of my favorite, you know, kind of things that I want to keep with me forever. I'd be really upset if I lost that. What's else in here? Aha! Um, some Gore-Tex Overmits by Extremities, a UK company. Um, extremely useful when it's really, really wet. At the end of the day, they are mittens. You obviously lose, you know, various controls over your fingers, but if it's really raining, you need them. Was there anything else? Oh yes, I'll chuck that over there as well. I brought a really small light by Petzl. Um, you know, we're not gonna be hiking or anything like that. And uh, I thought a really little head torch, like so, really handy, really lightweight. Thank you, Rob, cheers. Now, quickly moving on, appreciate this is taking a bit of time, but at the end of the day, if you're gonna go and do um, a bike packing adventure, then you do need to take lots of bits and bobs. And actually, um, I did forget to mention one thing. I've actually never done this before and nor has Rob. This is the first time we've ever undertaken anything like this in our entire lives. 
However, Rob comes from the diving world and that means a lot of preparation and understanding. He's also an adventurer as well, um, loves the cold weather, loves the Arctic. Myself, I've undertaken probably about 20, 25 years of adventure um, exploration, Greenland and some time on Everest and all these kind of things. And all of this knowledge that we've collected is transferable into our ability to figure out how we're going to cycle around Iceland. But neither of us are generic cyclists and neither of us are bike packers. So this has been a learning curve for us. And I think that's important to mention that pretty much anyone can really go and do an adventure like this with just a little bit of preparation and planning. Moving on to the main front handlebar pouch. What have we got in here? Et voila. Whoops, I've got to keep that band. Oh, it's come off nicely. Good. So in here, we've got a synthetic warm jacket from Rab. Rab being a UK brand, you probably may have heard it. It's one of the best mountaineering brands out there. That's kept us nice and warm. And also, I think, yes, I have a kind of like three-quarter, more like a body warmer type thing. Also synthetic, so no animals were hurt in the manufacture of this clothing. Boxer shorts, merino, made from armadillo. Not much I can say about boxer shorts, but you need them. I'm only carrying one pair. Obviously I'm wearing a pair, we won't see those in this video, but we are taking one extra pair. You wash them and attempt to dry them in the warm Icelandic sunshine. <clears throat> anyway, spare boxer shorts, um, a top, spare top. Obviously I'm wearing one as well. This is a little wind buffer water repellent -y. it's not a full Gore-Tex liner. It's made by a company called Rab again. It's very nice, it's a good wind chaser. My only criticism uh, of this is that we couldn't get the bright green. Black is not the best color to be wearing on a bike on a main road. So next time, if I could get a green one, I would really, really love that. But it's worked very well, especially on the Fairly decent days that we've had. What's else in here? Mm. This is just me. I take this everywhere. This is just a stuff sack. It supplements the pillow. All of your clothing, you get a nice sleepy feeling. Chuck that over there on the pile. Oh, that's the end of that one. Wash, wash kit. Now I'm not going to tell you that you need a toothbrush and I'm not going to tell you that you need toothpaste and all that stuff. And for me, I certainly don't need hair gel. But some things that I have chosen to show you um, is a little pack towel that I bought in Fort William in Scotland just a few months ago. Really lightweight, just handy for washing parts if you get my meaning. Quite handy, dries very quickly. Um, some um, Sea to Summit body wash, really small, and you can clean clothes, you could wash uh, fruit with it, you can wash up your cup or whatever, and you can wash yourself. And it's fully biodegradable, so it's safe to use near streams, which is an important consideration. Um, last thing I'm really gonna mention about personal items is talcum powder, just regular talcum powder. I've used it on many kind of trips um, when I've worked in sort of jungle environments as well. Um, there are parts of your body, we won't go into detail, that you know can get quite damp and it's quite a useful piece of kit. Also nice on your feet when you get in your tent. So talcum powder's pretty useful. Nearly done, bear with me. Um, on the front of the bike, we've got what's a fork tubes basically. Um, and in our fork tubes is, is yumminess, is all the stuff that we eat. Um, Rob's favorite item is no doubt contained in this little bag, and that's his soup. Soup and drinking chocolate. Rob loves his soup. It's the highlight of his day, as I'm reminded constantly. So there's Rob's soup. Um, what else we got in here? Aha! We've got these uh, energy drinks, also made by um, Real Tormat. 
Um, so kind of like glucose and peach and lemony flavor, really nice stuff. An extra spoony, because if you lose your first spoon, you're gonna have a problem. And these spoons are great because they're long and you need them long because we have obviously, we're eating dried food. Again, real dry food made by um, a lovely company in Norway called Real Tormat. That's not a Norwegian accent. But anyway, and we've, we've gone down the vegan range. That's just personal choice, but they do a whole range of stuff. What's great about these is that they just need boiling water and they're vacuum packed as well as freeze dried. So, you know, that really does scrunch down to quite a ridiculous volume and they are quite yummy. I need a long spoon to eat, although you can rip the bag further should you wish. Whoosh! Disappeared out of shop. We also have breakfasts because breakfasts are extremely important. Rob loves his breakfast. He can't get enough of it. Um, breakfast, same kind of thing, same kind of principle, real tomats, breakfasts. We couldn't get enough food. In fact, actually, when I kind of got all this stuff, I thought, Kevin, what are you doing buying all of this food? It's ridiculous. Because we, we shipped it, basically. We flew it from home to, um, to Iceland. And uh, I thought, why am I doing all this? Why am I buying peanut butter? Why am I buying blocks of cheese? Why am I buying all this stuff? It's Iceland. It's not like we're cycling around Greenland or something. But I can honestly say, finding supplies, finding calories, essentially, has been one of the hardest things. I think, what, seven days, Rob, is that right? Seven days um, between seeing a service station to the next. Of course, if you're driving, that's like two hours, but when you're cycling, it has been a real bugbear. So if you are planning an adventure to Iceland, I would really think about your resupplying method. Perhaps send stuff ahead to your accommodation or to a friend or find someone on Facebook that could help you. But food and nutrition has been a real, real problem. Now we've talked loads of um, chocolate bars and stuff. Again, also by Real Tormat, um, some brownies and you know these kind of high energy munchy snacky thingy bobs they've been really great Just mum, 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 mum. um a bag of nuts not much i can say more about that but these are great because you stuff them as you're going just in a dry bag works perfectly bag of nuts this is probably i would say the most essential item it could end any expedition if you run out, and that's coffee. Coffee is essential for Rob and I's bodily function. So we have plenty of coffee. It's your favorite thing. You're not having any more, it's mine. Coffee. And coming out is gas. Obviously, um, stove needs fuel. We've chosen the gas method. We could have used the petrol method. Uh, we've chosen gas and we're going to make sure that all of these get recycled when we get back. That's a very, very important consideration. Uh, we're probably going to use about four of these during our one month uh, trip between two people. And that's because of the efficiency of the stove. So gas is very important. I won't throw that across the room towards Rob. Nearly done to the wall behind me. Um, I guess I could start off by, if I come this way, Rob can see me. I guess um, I'll start off with the outers. Now, we made a very conscious decision here um, not to use cycle clothing. We've actually chosen more mountaineering and expedition type clothing. And the reason for that is because essentially we are in a mountain environment and we don't have the luxury, unlike today, to dry our stuff. So we've actually chosen full Gore-Tex equipment. Um, this particular jacket by Rab, um, we can actually wear our helmets and the hood will accommodate the helmet because it's designed to take a climbing helmet as well. So that's been really useful and that's kept us really dry. So moving along the line, um, this is the last bag, um, and this bag actually fits where the pedals go. 
and in it we've kept our toolkits. I spent, well, actually Rob did, a lot of time researching um, what type of tools would you take because ultimately you're going to have to carry these things, you know. There's a finite limit of the amount of equipment that you can physically carry on a bike. So we had to make some real hard decisions. Um, I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to come back to that. But what else is in there? All kind of random stuff. I won't go into too much detail, but things like cable ties, really useful. Um, cord, really useful, you never know. Um, a toothbrush, not for what you think, but cleaning the gravel from the chain. We've got chain lube, actually, the chain lube isn't here. It's somewhere else, but we did have chain lube. Puncture repairs, in case we have to repair the spare inner tubes. Tape, this is like Christmas, isn't it? What do I get? Um, thingy, what are they called, Rob? Tire levers. Yeah. Rob is our bike mechanic. I know nothing. If I didn't have Rob, this would be the shortest cycling trip round Iceland by far. Because I think after one day, the bike would have had something needing done to it and I'd be, what do I do? Toolkits from Lazine, pretty much we can almost build a rocket ship with everything that's supplied on these little babies. So that's that. Super glue, very useful. I could super glue Rob's hands or something quite <laughs> random. Um, Brake pads, uh, Rob's replaced his brake pads. These are my brake pads. I wouldn't have a clue. I'm a filmmaker. I wouldn't have a clue how to replace brake pads, but Rob is a technical dude and he works out how to do his. So, brake pads. Pump. Pump action. Lazine, really good. What I love about this is it's got a bendy little tube and I was shocked um, because when we arrived in Iceland, we had to deflate our, our tires, our tubes, and we had to re-inflate them when we assembled the bike. And I was shocked. I would say within 25 pumps, give or take, the tires were completely re-inflated by a hand pump. This is an awesome piece of kit and not that expensive either. Um, a little mirror. It's not to do some... Actually, you could... Do, actually, you could. You could use it for that, but it was actually so that, you know, we are cycling on a, on a main road, on basically a, Iceland's equivalent of, of the M25 in London or other global orbital roads. Really useful piece of safety kit. Talking about safety, going back to Lazine, these are our rear lights. We have two, so a backup, and if the weather's really bad, a third, I won't turn them on and flash them at the camera because they are bright. And I would probably say that these are one of the most important pieces of kit you could possibly have on your bike because in Iceland, the weather, thank you Rob, the weather is terrible and you know, you're gonna be in cloud and rain the whole time. Um, a map. We got this map from our friends at Stanford's Books in London. Stanford's is, I think, arguably the oldest map shop book in the world. Don't quote me on that, but they've been around for a long, long time and they do thousands and thousands of maps and guidebooks from all over the world. And we decided to take a physical map which is actually waterproof paper, which is awesome, because all the technology in the world can fail and a, a road map is an essential piece of kit. We've also taken a couple of guidebooks from Cicerone Press, uh, just to give us some reference of some things that we could do on the side. Um, they've been really, really useful just to kind of find different things. Um, yes, they do weigh a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's also nice to flick through some physical books um, in your tent at night, again, by Cicerone Press. Nearly done, nearly done. First aid kit. We've chosen to have a big first aid kit. Why? There's two of us, so this is obviously communal, like we're only carrying one stove. But 
we thought if you have an accident on a bike, it could be quite a serious one, you know, some major bleeds. So in here is some pretty, um, pretty good stuff. I've got people that work in the medical industry and they've given me some kind of high grade bandages, stuff called Celox, which is a collag collagulate, collagulate, basically stops bleeding. We've got all kinds of ointments and potions and tablets and blah, 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 stitches and paper stitches. We've overkilled it, but if we'd have had a bad accident, we're a long way from hospital. This is a tent. Tent by a British company called Terra Nova Equipment. Um, a tent, yeah, what can I say about a tent? It's your life support system. It's amazing that it lives on your bike. This normally fits on the front of my bike. I won't get it out, um, but without a tent, you're dead. I mean, yeah, you could use a bivy bag, but in these conditions, one night, max. A tent is your life support system. Um, this has been absolutely awesome. We have had problems at the moment because the winds are ridiculous. Like I said, over 100 kilometers an hour gusts and pretty much um, there are only a few tents that could withstand that and they're big and heavy. So, you know, but a tent, awesome. Tent repair kit. Basically, if we did snap a pole, we can fix it. Cup, what can I say? This is a bum saver, i.e. when you're sitting down and having your lunch, you can sit on you know, some pretty gravelly patches. It's also, I've been using it a lot to kneel down. I got probably one of my knees, like it, it hurts when I kneel. And sometimes kneeling on gravel isn't great. So this is a great thing. And as you can see, it bears evidence of the wetness outside. Helmet by Cube, you'd be, without being patronizing, um, you'd be an idiot to cycle the ring road without a helmet because it's a fast moving road and <laughs> mind you, if you got hit by a truck. <laughs> but anyway, uh, last couple of things. Spare physical tire by a company called Erie. E R E, if you can get close up for the viewers back at home. Um, we brought two, um, we've used one already. So Rob had a slash, we're not quite sure how it happened on the wall of his tire, compromised the physical wheel, so we had to swap that out. We didn't think we would need these, but Iceland's gravel roads are unforgiving and therefore we definitely needed it. And we've also burnt through all of our inner tubes and these are reinforced as well. So that tells you something about the terrain. We haven't gone for super chunky because we're only about 10% on kind of the F-road gravel system here. Predominantly, we, predominantly uh, we are on asphalt and obviously we need to roll smoothly on asphalt. So it is a trade-off and these are the ones that we've gone for, eerie tires. Bum bum. Last couple of things, bum bag, highly fashionable but highly useful because you can put your stuff, your mobile phone, your credit card, whatever you need, reading glasses, always at hand. Um, I'm wearing this on my back. Um, it's where I'm keeping all the film equipment in, all the iPhones that we're shooting this production in using Dolby Vision HDR as the main capture tool to improve the image. And um, everything goes in there, waterproof. And on the outside of that is a spot tracker. Um, that can send emergency, uh, an emergency message via satellite connection that we're in trouble or we can just check in to say that we're okay. We haven't had to use it. The connectivity with uh, mobile phones in Iceland is phenomenal. Um, so we haven't had to use it. But I think that if you were going to do anything in Iceland um, off the grid, um, you'd be foolish not to invest in something like this because if something did happen, you couldn't connect home. Two more things, two more things and we're done. Um, trousers, again, um, from Rab, Gore-Tex trousers. And if I take these off, these are kind of like fleecy 
very quicky, dry trousers covered in actually chocolate. Ugh. Um, again, from Rab, really useful when we got to camp at night. These were lovely to put on because they are incredibly warm. You could cycle um, in them, but to be honest, a little bit too warm. I've actually, where the opportunity have allowed to be just wearing my shorts. And actually, I don't know if you can do this, Rob, um, shoes. Um, yeah, we've, well, I personally have gone down sort of wearing uh, kind of hiking boots, basically. Gore-Tex lined, very, very light, very, very comfortable. I've chosen that. We're not locking into the pedals. Um, the pedals are spiky anyway, which gives us lots of grip. Excellent. Um, the last thing, I think it is the last thing. Um, last thing, last but no means least. A very odd piece of kit in many ways. Um, again, um, made by uh, Terra Nova Equipment. It's basically a shelter. It's a two-man bothy shelter. Has no pegs. Um, you pull it up over your body, climb inside, takes two people, you lean up against it, it creates a space. If you, if you had an accident and you were getting hypothermic, um, this could literally save your life. We haven't had that fortunately yet, still two more days to go, but we haven't had to use it for that. But what we have used it for is basically having lunch, getting out of the wind, getting out of the rain. It's highly hilarious, two fully grown men trying to squeeze into this kind of city uppy shelter, but it works very well. And there is that. And I will drop it like so. Bang. Rob, have I missed anything? Uh, surprisingly, no. Well, there we are. I've gone through everything. Like I said, neither of us have done this before, okay? We are not bikers. We've done various trips, but nothing of this scale. Most of the knowledge has come through trial and error. Most of the knowledge has been kind of transferred learning from, like I say, from Rob's career as a diving instructor and my career as an outdoor filmmaker. We've kind of mished and mashed our knowledges together to kind of work out what works and what doesn't. Um, I'll ask Rob first of all. Rob, what has been, what has been your favourite pieces of kit that you've taken, uh, either new, old, borrowed, or stolen? What, what are your, what are your favourites? It's hard because all the kit, you know, serves a purpose. It's all been there for an obvious reason, and it's really hard to pick just three. Um, if I was forced to, which you are, um, I would say the uh, the top I'm wearing, uh, the merino wool stuff, um, has been fantastic. Wet or dry, it keeps you warm. Um, personally, my actual bike, so my, my Cube New Road, um, I absolutely adore the bike. And if you're going to do something like this, I think you need a bike that's comfortable for you. Yeah. I use the words comfortable for you on purpose because this might not be everybody's type of bike but it was certainly the bike that I would like uh, and lastly would be the the waterproof equipment the rab waterproof stuff okay. um, you know the weather we have here is so extreme that if you were wet then this would be absolutely miserable so to yeah. be able to say completely dry is, is is a big deal if I was forced to pick three okay and you yeah, good question. Um, I would say um, from a new piece of kit, I do think this rear um, Apidura bag is really, really good. Its only weakness really is you. If you don't, if you overpack it and you don't fold it enough, it will leak. But it's quite versatile because you can lash. We've had we've had like whole constructions attached to the back, you know. So you can lash on quite a lot. I would say. Um, as a new piece of kit, that's worked really well for me. Um, from an old piece of kit, um, I would say my, my Rector stove from MSR, because that really is just unbelievably quick and very reliable. And I do love my Terra Nova Voyager 10. I just feel safe in it. It's my little shelter, and I do love that. And um, I would probably also add one more. I, I do think these lights from Lazain are awesome. Um, they are so bright, you really, I, I joke, you look like a lighthouse, you do look like a lighthouse. They are the most insanely bright lights you can have. And at the end of the day, that could literally save your life. So, with all that said, 
I think pretty much that's it. Um, again, I really want to thank the guys that um, from what, what are they called? What are they called? What are they called? Vat and the Jokal Tours who have allowed us um, to to use their facilities today. Um, without their help, this little video wouldn't have been possible. And we really do appreciate the free accommodation that they've given us to shelter from the storm. So hopefully we've got two more days of cycling where everything will work on the bike and then our Icelandic adventure is over. So I hope this video has been useful um, and that it will inspire you to go out on your own cycle adventure, whether it be long or short, just get out there, turn those pedals and have fun. That's all I can say. Thank you.